Um, don't leave, because last but not least is the vaping seminar, and this is, I think, one of the most important ones. And so I would like to introduce to you Sally Anchetta. She's uh, with the Public Health Institute. She's the Hawaii Island Community Coordinator, and I'm sure she's going to share some very eye-opening information. We'll probably go out of here with our eyes wide open and say, oh my goodness, we've got a lot of work to do. So Sally, let's welcome Sally with a round of applause. Aloha. 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 Um, my family bleeds blue and gold on one side, which is my husband's side. We both graduated, um, now I'm going to age myself, 1985, so I got to go to Hilo High class reunion, but I graduated in Alaska and moved here right out of high school. And our daughter graduated, and our son is at Waikia, because he's the one outside of town, and he would never wear a Waikia High School t-shirt for any event, even though we were chair of concessions for four years, for volleyball. So, we are a blue and gold family for sure. And um, what we're going to do tonight is just briefly, like fast forward, seatbelt on, talk about baby. This has been on my radar screen for about six years. It's now on the FDA and the CDC's radar screen because it's a problem. I wanted to get ahead of it before it was a problem, but a lot of time in public health, you don't get money to do anything until there's a big problem. And they waited for that, so I'm sorry. Um, but that is where we're at today. I'll help you get that up. And real fast before we get started, I wanted to let you know on the back table, there's going to be, there's handouts. So if you have to leave before the presentation is um, done, we have a few handouts I want to share with you. Because of the rampant rise of e-cigarette use, um, Danny Garcia, who is principal of Kohala Elementary, asked us to do a parent newsletter handout. So we just had this printed in color for you, and what I like about this, not just as it give you information about e-cigarettes, it, it gives you, a, from New York Times, um, uh, an article of how to have a conversation with your kids about baby. So I think this is a really good tool to take home, and just like how to have those open-ended um, questions and conversations. If this resonates with you tonight, especially high school students, we are having an Inspire Town Hall meeting um, on June 13th. This is open to anybody who wants to register and attend, but what we're trying to do is engage um, DOE, HPD, parents, prosecutor's office, and high school students, especially our youth, to talk about what's going on, I mean, why did this rise happen, what can we do, and how can we move forward and, and deal with some of the issues that we're seeing at our schools. Okay, we're going to move fast. Can you be my slide guy? Thank you. So, let's do a quick overview of what's happening with e-cigarettes. You can go to next, the next three. This was put together based on data with the College of Pharmacy right here in Hilo. And this data is already old. This was These are um, slides that we do in um, school presentations. Well, I'll be presenting next week across the street at Hilo Intermediate. And um, in 2016, 3 million middle school and high school students were current um, e-cigarette users in the past 30 days. Those numbers have skyrocketed. They've increased on the Big Island tremendously. We have the highest rates in the state. Next. So we're going to do a quick myth or fact. And I actually have some really nice pens in the back. So if you get it right, you can grab a pen. So first question, are smoking e-cigarettes, ESDs, any electronic, uh, electronic smoking device safe? What do you think? Okay, next slide, and next slide. You're right, it's a myth. And these are some of the health effects. It's linked to bronchitis. I just found out today that it's now being linked to causing asthma in children. I mean, the, the, baby, the kids that are vaping. Um, it triggers asthma, pneumonia, ear, nose, and throat irritation. Cardiovascular disease, just last summer they came out with a study that said you're 42% more likely to have a myocardial infraction if you vape. So there's real data coming out that vaping is not safe. I just heard of a YK intermediate student that was out for a month from school, 
regular vaping, and had pneumonia. So you can imagine that these devices stay moist, like, um, that there's a lot of bacteria that can get in our lungs, not just the chemicals that are inside the, the devices. Okay, next one. Oh, these are just some um, real life studies that have been going on around um, the safety and the health effects of vaping, including our Surgeon General report. Um, a lot of movement is happening right now with the CDC and the FDA. Okay? And some other health risks. Next. So, they do not contain nicotine. What's the big deal? It's just flavor, myth or fact. What do you guys think? And this is a hard question for even the kids. It's a myth, and we'll get to that in just a moment. And next slide. Almost all e-cigarettes contain nicotine, including many that are um, say they're nicotine-free. And this is where we get really muddy. It's not regulated. They can put whatever they want on the labels, but if you're going to have a regular user or something, you want them to need it. For the reason that I think a lot of the ages that the kids are using nowadays do have nicotine is because the risk that they're willing to take to vape. These are not kids that just come from predominant families where they're going to be exposed to drugs. These are our honor students. These are kids that have a lot to lose. My co-worker on Kauai at one of the schools that she um, does presentations at, the Mayday Queen was caught vaping, and now they have no Mayday Queen. So and I, I just talked to her this morning, and I said, that shows you the risk, the need that these kids have to use this product. My son told me about a uh, boy at Wakefield High School that asked the teacher, if I have to vape, can I just go in the back of the room and shake my foot? You know, just to get rid of the urge of vaping. Okay, next one. Are they regulated by the FDA? Myth or fact? Okay, next slide. And next slide. This is kind of a myth fact thing. Both are true. But the big regulation over what's inside them, are there warning labels and all that stuff, hasn't happened and was supposed to. But they are regulated in two areas, which is advertising. No longer can anybody advertise that they're safer than cigarettes or that they help you quit smoking. The second one has to go through clinical trials. Any product that helps you quit smoking has to go through clinical trials. So that one, the FDA did put a stamp on, so they can't do that. So what I tell kids when I present is, if you hear it on the radio stations, and I know the ones that run them, let me know. I leave my information with them, and I said, just let me know, because our prosecuting attorney loves our kids enough to send um, letters to the stations and the companies that are being advertised saying that information and ask them to take them off the air. Okay, next one. Can they help, right into that, can they help you quit traditional cigarettes, myth or fact? Next slide. Sometimes they can. And so that's why I don't want to completely say it's not true, but what we're seeing is the majority of people, and this happened last month when I was at Waimea Community um, Association meeting, we had town hall, and the, the gentleman walked out and said, yep, I quit smoking, thank God I, I, I switched to e-cigarettes, I don't smoke anymore. So we're seeing a lot of tobacco users are transferring, and the sad thing, because I used to run programs here for teens, and I used to help people quit smoking when I ran the American Lung Association, is they, they don't tr attempt to quit as often as if they can transfer to another mechanism. And next slide. And then last, this is the last one, Mr. Fact. Is ESD use increasing in our high schools and middle schools? How many of you guys in the audience, I'm gonna, for the kids, know somebody your age that's vaping? Raise your hand. If you're a student or do you know anybody that you've seen vaping? Raise your hand. At the middle school, if at the middle school across the street, usually every student but one will raise their hand. And he's the one that doesn't talk to anybody. You know, like so that's the one that you're like, he's kind of just down on his own. But um, truly it's going up exponentially. When I started doing this presentation in 2014, we had 17% of this, no, 17% yeah, of high school students had attempted to use e-cigarettes in the last 30 days. And that was startling because we were down to like 9% ever smoking. The following year it went up to 25%. We're at 34% of our high school students saying that they're vaping 
at, in the past 30 days in our schools in Hawaii County. So if they're admitting that they're vaping at 34% on a survey that the Department of Health does, how much more are doing it they're not telling us? So I know that number's higher. Okay. And then are they safe? We're gonna go through these really quickly. How many of you have heard or seen about an e-cigarette exploding? Go ahead. So this is a status of e-cigarettes that had occurred, and this is where they exploded. Most of them will explode um, while the device is being used or in a pocket. So I have coverage today of one exploding in somebody's pocket. A lot of guys will keep it in their cargo pants, and it rubs against the, your leg and it automatically turns on. Um, one blew up at Waikia High School last year as the boy was changing the battery right in his hands. I actually had the e-cigarette. It's in one of the health teacher's classrooms. And another, another student got injured. So the, it's very common for them to explode um, when they, get, they turn on automatically. So much so, how many of you have heard when you check in that you can't have them on an airplane? You cannot pack e-cigarettes in your luggage because of the fact that they can turn on and they cause fires. Okay, next one. So here's just some samples of stories of explosions. I was teaching at um, Ms. Bergner's um, Health Academy class a few years ago. I was there on a Tuesday and Thursday. The Wednesday had a, an explosion on, on the news. We were able to actually show the um, news story to kids. You know, and, um, The one at Pearl City that just happened this past December. This was really sad. The guy went to play uh, basketball, 24 years old, in Pearl City. It was kind of, I, I mean, ironic. He goes, I had to just be right before I went to play basketball. So here he's gonna go get some physical activity. He's gonna vape right before. And the mod exploded right there. It exploded so hard that it went from his hands to the fence and it wrapped around and melted around the fence. It busted his teeth. Um, it, it, was, it was a horrible disfigurement on his face and um, had to have oral surgery done, had to have teeth replaced. Cost was well over $20,000 that he had out of pocket. Okay. And it's very similar to this gentleman. It actually, because you're going to see how these cigarettes um, are manufactured, the mouthpiece went down his throat and it exploded in his throat. And um, so he had missing teeth, facial fractures, and a broken neck. Next slide. We, this used to happen um, in Hilo when they used to let teens um, sample. Volcano e-cigarettes was really notorious for this at the plaza before the laws were changed that kids could come by and actually sample. It was happening a lot on Hawaii too. So this happened at a mall in New York where he sampled it, went to the mall that day with his friends, the e-cigarette blew up in his eye and now he's blind in one eye. And the next slide, I was in Honolulu the day this happened. The e-cigarette um, caught on fire inside the luggage hold of a Hawaiian Airlines inter-island plane. The plane turned around and landed. Um, emergency landing and the signage and the kind of the panic at the inter island terminal that day was crazy. There were signs everywhere and then all of a sudden there was on the big monitors um, when you check in there was just signs just flashing no e-cigarettes. Next one. Okay so here are the, here's a sample of one exploding in his pants and I show this at the middle school but the whole video actually shows him going out the door and somebody pulling the pants off of him because his leg is burning. We didn't want to show kids that. You know, it just, the rest of the day would be disrupted. But um, the reason being is in his cargo camp. And I've heard from an administrator that an e-cigarette was confiscated at a school. The security guard came in and said, you need to make sure you take the batteries out. She's like, why? And he said, because it can turn on automatically. And sure enough, she opened the drawer and the e-cigarette was on. So imagine that could have been on our campuses right here in East Hawaii, that um, either a fire or an explosion, okay? So here's some of the more common devices. Um, the, first, the first one is a Juul. And a Juul is the hot one to have right now for kids. How many of you guys, if your students, have heard of a Juul? Raise your hand. Okay, they're preloaded, they have nicotine in them, they come in different flavors, they look like a flash drive. They're small, and they can be big like a flash drive. Then you're getting into preloaded e-cigarettes, 
um, blue are preloaded, then you're going to move to ones that you actually load yourself and you buy all your different fancy juices. And the last one is a mod, and the mods, big fat clouds. This is where we get to look like a dragon. You've seen them when we drive down the road and somebody's, you know, exhaling and the big cloud comes out of the car. Those are the most popular. One day, I, um, I feel like a game, so I rolled up. I drove into KTA parking lot with my son and my husband, and there was a small Zion, you know, little car. About um, three or four boys were in it, about age 18, 19. And one really rolled out of the car, and the whole car just kind of had this big buffle, you know, clouds coming out. Like, they couldn't see. It was almost like a Cheech and Chong moment, but it was, it was all fake. And um, that's what they like to do, just make big clouds. What really scared me one day is I was driving down the railroad, and, it, and a woman, I'd say she's about 22, 24, was in a small white car, and she exhaled, and the whole car filled up with vapor. I'm like, there should be a law against that, because she can't even see, <laughs> you know, if we can't, you know, shouldn't be on our phones, you should actually be able to have a clear vision when you drive. Okay, next one, please. So, here's some of the different components of an e-cigarette. Um, the refillable ones have, have products that actually start breaking down and the kids start making metals, not just e-juice. So, there is the mouthpiece at the top. The cartridge is the tank that has the liquid in it. There's the micro compressor and the battery. The battery is key too because um, a lot of times when you get an e-cigarette, especially if you order them online, they're going to tell you, get this other battery, you can get bigger, fatter clouds. And this is where the explosions happen. These are those really strong lithium batteries. And our kids, even us, if we're do playing too much video or watching too much video, the phone gets hot if you're on it for a long time. These are the same batteries that are inside e-cigarettes. So can we do the next slide? And so these are also this coil heating element. This is very interesting. Students buy e-cigarette parts online, and they sell parts. Because that coil element needs to be changed about once a week, depending on how much they bake. Because they actually, because of the heating of it, they break down, and now you're baking metal. So you can't taste your flavor anymore, and that's junk. You don't want you know, just taste aluminum, you want to taste cotton candy. So once that starts happening is the students need to get a different coil. So um, the atomizer is the mouthpiece, and because these all screw on and they're unregulated, this is why in the explosion, pieces go down your throat. Next. So we're going to do a quick little game. We're going to go through these really fast. Um, obviously, which one is a cigarette? The top one or the bottom one? Top. Okay, next one. Which one is a toy? And which one is the e-cigarette? So the top is the e-cigarette. The next, okay, next one. Which one is the flashlight? That side is the flashlight, the zero hour. Okay, what next? Which one is the hand radio? Absolutely, that's a mod. Which one is a speaker that could be in your classroom? This one's a speaker, that's the e-cigarette, the e-device. Spark plug, we have racers in the, in the house, we know that they are the GKs. That's an e-device. Homemade. Now, parents, I do not show this um, presentation in our schools because I don't like to plant any ideas. But we have a lot more slides that we share with HPD, prosecuting office, and stuff like that. Couple more. Homemade, Pokeball. And so we're gonna get into some of the newest trends. This is called the eyedropper. And they load it, they bake from it. This is super popular on Kauai right now. I don't know how popular this is compared to the next one on the big island. The next one, the jewel. So look at how small these can be. See that tiny little jump drive that can fit? And any, if you walked into your kid's bedroom, you would never ever think that that was an e, you know, e device. Or all of a sudden you go in the room and it's like, oh, it smells fresh in here. Did you clean? Did you spray for grease? It's like, no, I just ate, but they're not going to tell you. So, um, how does a jewel work? It's a device that heats up a cartridge containing oils to create a vapor that quickly dissolves into the air. So, kids like this because they can do it on campus. So last night I was at a high school across town that my kids go to, and their vice principal let me know that three kids got suspended that yesterday 
for this. And they walk past them, they smell it, they smell the cotton candy, but there's no cloud. They're like, that's enough evidence for us. Let's see what's in your bag. Open it up. You're coming with me to the office. And sure enough, there it was. And so we're going to, we actually have this the engaging event to talk to DOE because they're like, we need to do more. Suspension is almost like a free day. What else can we do? Um, I wanted to put these last two. These just came out today. My knowledge changes every day with e-cigarettes because there's new knowledge every day. So just today, the FDA cracks down on Juul e-cigarettes, and this was on the CBS News, came out today. And this one is on ABC, Juul Maker to invest $30 million to combat underage banking. These are made for kids. This industry has been doing it since we were kids, and we're going to see a couple of slides like how did we get marketed to and that these are not made for adults. Adults are not buying jewels. So how are they getting them? We raise the age to 21. We do know there's stores that sell to underage kids here, but they also can buy them online. So just be mindful when you give gift cards, like a Visa gift card, or if you give them a debit card, you know, just have that relationship with them. Know that they're making wise choices, okay? So I briefly will tell you just a couple things that are in e-juice because the people who support vaping are gonna say it's natural, it's safe, it's just vegetable glycerin, it's just this, you know, get off your soapbox. So let's look at what they are real fast. So PG is propylene glycanol, is antifreeze, and VG is the vegetable glycerin. Vegetable glycerin is the stuff that makes the smoke when you guys do a play, or you go to a concert and there's that smoke machine. I don't know about you, but to me, that's caused me to have a hard time breathing. So I don't want, I don't want to have that in my lungs all the time. And then there's nicotine, there's the e-liquid, there's the flavoring that all has its own issues. Next. I know you probably can't see this. I tried to blow it up as big as I could, but just propylene glycanol, which is one of the main ingredients across the board in all e-juices, skin irritation, toxic to liver and kidneys, not safe for infants, um, neurological problems, respiratory issues, cardiovascular problems, and this is just a, a handful just from that one product. Next. So the vegetable glycerin, skin irritation, laxative effects, other side, side effects. One of the things, and I, I have friends that own vape shops, I mean people I associate with, we're not close because I'm on a different side of the fence. But we can talk about um, vaping really easily. And there are, there are supporters say, but these are safe. These are in our fruits and vegetables. I said, yes, and that goes into our digestive system. This is not, is not intended to go into our respiratory system. And I think that's where the big argument is, is it's safe for digestion, but it's not safe for inhalation. The lungs are very sensitive. And at the end of every presentation, our, your kids, if they went to Hilo Enter, they touch lungs. I bring real lungs so they can see how sensitive they are. E-cigarette poisoning has dramatically increased amongst um, children, especially infants and small crawling children and toddlers. There's been deaths from children drinking e-juice and having access to it. And when you see how they're marketed without any safety lids or safety um, tops, they're very attractive. I mean, who wouldn't want to drink cotton candy? So um, very toxic. One chemical, and I have a poster, I brought 12, they can go all over Hilo High if you guys don't mind posters up, um, it's called diacetyl. This has been linked to popcorn lung, which is literally the obliteration of your um, lung tissue. They found that di high levels of diacetyl um, is in most e-juices. They did a study and it came out 91% of the e-juices that they studied just randomly had high levels of diacetyl. Eight factory workers that worked for an um, air popcorn factory um, died from this, from popcorn lung, and that's how it got its name. Um, when I talk to kids, it's like, I don't know how long your vaping may lead you to potentially have this. The only treatment for popcorn lung is a full lung transplant. Just so happened, KITV News in November had a story on a woman who had a different lung issue that needed a full lung transplant. Her out-of-pocket cost was $1 million and her pomologist was running the story for a GoFundMe account for her. The only place she could do it was Chicago. The cost to get to Chicago was $50,000. So I hate, I, I mean, our kids are invincible, 
they, my son tells me all the time, he's 17, he's like, Mom, we're invincible, we can do anything. Um, so they don't look at the long range issues of baby. Okay. So why is it so popular? Do you think if we didn't have these, these yummy flavors, kids would want to be? Most likely not. Eight out of 10 kids say the reason they've ever tried it was for the flavors. And let's look at how some of those flavors are marketed to us. Okay, next one. Oh, lastly, before we move away from things inside pea juice, I just want to talk to you about the most dangerous chemicals. I go on much more detail in the schools, but just for you, I wanted to tell you, um, which of these do you think are inside e-juice? We have, you know, gas, cadmium and batteries, um, insecticides, paint thinner. The plant is a tobacco plant. And next one, all of these. And just a few of them that are the most dangerous to me, the next one, formaldehyde. Because of the way that the e-juice is heated and the volume that we inhale with e-cigarettes, much higher levels of formaldehyde is coming out. Um, so when you see those big fat clouds, this is what's coming out. This is there. Um, isoprene is the oil. If you ever touch e-juice, and when e-juice was first coming out, when you had the ones that you refilled, it's very sticky. So it's very viscousy. So you're, you're, it's recommended that you use gloves because you can actually burn your skin because of the e-juice. Just like the isoprene in um, all of these air fresheners, that's one of the main chemicals inside e-juice. And then of course, um, the nitro nicotine, which is the pesticide side of nicotine. Nicotine was commonly used as a pesticide here in the United States, and um, this is one of our most common ingredients with that. So. You know, once kids start seeing this, they're starting to think a little bit. And the reason that we do these presentations in our schools is nobody else is telling the kids this. There's no commercials yet. There's not the 50 years of tobacco use like we had and all the study. So we got to start giving them some different information. These are just a few more of the chemicals that are coming out of their airways, nickel, magnesium, cadmium, chromium. Okay, next one. And then we'll go on to the next one. I wanted to show this slide because this is data that we just collected this year. How are kids learning about who's talking to them? Where are they getting their information about baking? Do you think it's print, walking past the store and seeing advertising, or radio? What do you guys think? Radio. We're the only island that's inundated with radio advertising. The other islands, these numbers are not high like they are here. So um, we are going to be doing some counter-marketing and running some new messages on the radio. So lastly, before we leave, I just wanted to really talk to you about marketing. This bottom um, advertisement, obviously it's gummy bears, it looks like gummy bears, it says it's gummy bears, it must be just a candy advertisement. But if you look really closely in the middle, it says flavor, vapor. This isn't a 17 magazine. Seventeen magazines are for our ten-year-old little girls. This is not, seventeen-year-olds are looking at Cosmo already. So, you know, they're advertising to our children. Look at how we were advertised. And then we still sell these downtown at the Hilo Candy Shop. You know, the pretend cigarettes that we got to buy and pretend to smoke? They were marketing us to be future customers. These are maple and vanilla cupcake e-cigarettes. And they have fancy tips, and then of course we have to have seasonal flavors. So we have candy cane and other flavors. Next one. Look at this. Slam and snow cone shave ice. Ju this is what killed me. Juice box. We packed juice boxes thinking apple juice is safe for our kids, but these are now e-juice boxes. You know, liquid candy. So if a child was a small, big glass, and they can't, you know, and this is sitting on a coffee table. Very easy and attractive to drink it, digest it, and it can have um, dire consequences. Next one. Oh, stop the habit, start the hobby. You know, these are the kind of messaging our kids are getting. Next one. Life is about making choices. Next one. We gotta be local. We have da juice, classics never die, island flavors. The next one is da juice. Go ahead. And um, they have Molokai, hot red. 
They have all different kinds of flavor. Mango is one of the most popular, but I mean, it's just constantly evolving to tap into anything local. And it's a culture. Next one. So these are from Oahu. These are actual, we have, we have staff that go in and infiltrate and look at what's going on. So these are vape contests, cloud contests, and there's prizes. And look at first place. You get a credit to buy more e-juice or product. So let's look at some pictures. Next one. This is what they're measuring is how big, how much lung capacity, and how far can you get that cloud of chemicals across the room. Next one. And then we have uh, one for women. She was the women champion. And these are some of the other things that they can win. Okay, next one. Oh, let's see if we can play this. Let's see if this pops up. Yes. Okay, we'll skip that. Um, just because we have, we're running this instead of. So we have counter marketing campaigns. We have been awarded, and a lot of it has to do because of the Big Island. I don't know if you're aware, but Hawaii County leads the state in a lot of legislation and a lot of work around um, tobacco use, trying to move forward ideas to protect our children especially. We were the first place to um, have smoke-free cars, and we actually brought the banner today. We'll, sh we'll share it in just a minute. But we have tobacco-free and vape-free cars if your children are in it. So if they're under the age of 18, nobody can smoke or vape in the car. Um, we were the first place to raise the age of sale to 21, and now we did it for a state. And because of the work we were doing in 2015, we ran for six weeks anti-vaping commercials on KDMXX. We had students at YKF High um, pick out and actually create the commercials. We vetted them. They were full of factual data and research, but it was from a, a teen voice. Um, there was a local vape shop that's very well known that has multiple stores across our, our town um, contact the radio station and insist that they take them down. I was away on the mainland for two weeks, but when I got back, all I could hear was the, the um, panic in the station manager's voice, and I said, no, they're, they're vetted, they're true, I can send you the fact sheets if you need it. He kept them on the air. But because of that, our agency was awarded $3 million to do counter-marketing campaigns statewide. So we're working with students, and um, we actually need to talk to Ma, she's still here. We have to set up a focus group, and we want to do it at Hilo High because there's some excellent PSAs that were created that will be um, aired in our movie theaters about e-cigarettes and the dangers of vaping. Okay? And I don't think, no, if we can even show this one. Okay, so I just talked about the laws. What's nice about the laws, they're actually going out and doing sting operations on the Big Island. So they're checking people, they're sending in people that are 20. You don't have to be 15 or 16, they're sending in 20 year olds to see if they sell to them. We just had this one law that's called a buffer zone that was being heard at the, at the state ledge because our youth council said this is what we want. We want a buffer zone that they're not selling this around us, especially on Oahu. And we took up four students, and they were from Cal High because they were like, we'll do it. They can walk from Cal High School to a vape shop that's right across the street from the middle school, and they're not parted. My husband is Filipino. He's, he's 50 this year, but he still looks like he's 30, you know? So he can still get parted. These kids are underage, so obviously they don't look like they're 21, and they're Filipino kids, and they're not parted at all. So this is why we wanted that buffer zone, because on the big island, our kids, most of you know, they have to drive to get to places. We don't have, they don't use public transportation. It's not urban, like, Kalihi and stuff, where they can just walk easily. So if they're being able to walk from school to get products, and these are kids that are honor students. They have a lot to lose. And speaking of loss, we can do the next one. Um, and these are our rates from 2015. Um, so we were at 29.5%. We're now at 34%. I know coaches and I know people that do combines here for college students to go on to the next level and play at Division I. There was a student baseball player last year, full ride scholarship, $45,000. And social media, which we talked about earlier, he had his big videos on social media, on Instagram. They pulled the scholarship because the choices he was making, they didn't want that for it with their athletes. He got $5,000 to like a Division three school, and he's in the middle of nowhere. So they look at social media, it, it matters, 
And um, our kids just don't realize that this could be dangerous. So the last thing I find out, that last slide, is what can we do next? This. You guys are our first parent education. We'll be at HPA on Monday night. HPA is actually going to ask us to stick later and speak with the headmaster because the problem is really bad. And um, train, we have trained facilitators at all our community health centers. They're going out and doing these presentations all the time. They're doing them at social service agencies, other places. Ask why um, e-cigarettes are gaining popularity. Like, talk to your kids. Ask them, you know, do you know anybody vaping? They're probably not going to tell you that they are if you don't already know it. But ask them, who, who, who gave, who, where did their friends get it from? What's really sad is when I go to schools, like I'll go across the street next week to Hilo Enter, and most of the kids will tell me, oh, an older cousin gave it to them. And I'm not calling anybody out. My, my kids, they're dealing with kids. I went to like, yeah, parents are buying it. So we need to do a lot more parent education. Um, we partner. We're going to partner with the DOE, HPD, um, parents, and the industry. At this Inspire meeting, we're not going to be like, oh, we are the white cats and the vape industry are the bad guys. We're inviting them to the event to help us solve this problem. They're the gatekeepers. If they're selling to our kids locally, we want them to be part of the solution. We want them to be good neighbors. And then shoes. Um, we want to give them information so our kids are empowered to make a good choice. Uh, that's where the, that handout that um, Charlene just gave you is valuable. And then finally, this just came out today, is this whole information about the jewel. If you're interested or you know, especially as educators, just there's a quick graph on the front just to talk about this. In 2016, this product wasn't even out. It was barely popular. In this last year, it sold, um, it's, went up more than 600% and it is the most popular e-device for kids. So Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids has helped fund stuff in the islands. They're very dedicated to this work and there's more information there. So I'll open up for a few questions. I know you guys are tired, your kids need to get home too and I don't want to keep you too late. But um, do you have any questions about e-devices or about the work we're doing or about anything you've heard tonight? Yes. You said, I think you said you went to Hilo every I do Hilo Enter every semester. Next week. Next week. Okay. And you go into classrooms here? Um, what I do is I'm invited by the teachers, so I do all the health classes. So Ms. Jay's yeah. health class, I'll be there next week. So I think it's mostly seventh graders, and we'll, I'll do five presentations. Okay. No, thank you for asking. And, and you know we are busy, not we, but everybody, all educators are busy. But we raised this army of ESD educators because we knew the problem was coming. So we have this great, it's called ESD Prevention Presentation that I partnered with the College of Pharmacy to create. It's very engaging. It gets kids play a game. They win prizes. It's a really reinforceable message. And um, we have 38 trained facilitators on the island. It came in really handy last earlier last month, the be, no, the beginning of April. Kalakehi Elementary had a huge problem with vaping. Elementary. They mandated that all the kids in the elementary school go through this, this presentation. So they break, broke it down K through 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, or something like that. And we had just done a training at, Cal I mean at West Hawaii Community Health Center. So there's 10 of their staff got trained. And they went in and did all those presentations. So that's kind of sad when a school, an elementary school has mandated, and they sent a letter home to the parents saying, your kids have to sit in on this presentation. So now we have a problem. If our, our elementary kids are having to, yes? Oh, I, I'm so thankful you asked that. Um, I wrote that down today. So an average vape, um, to have a vape habit is about $100 a month. So the device itself is about 40 if you're going to have a mod. The e-juice is about $40. And those um, compressors, the parts, the atomizers, those are $20. So it's usually a, it's about $100 a month habit for kids. And just to kind of get an idea of where kids are going with this, like, you know, where are they getting their money? Okay, Kauai, on Kauai, 
and I shared this publicly um, on the layout so I can share with you guys. There was a student, sixth grader, father, lieutenant, and quite police department. This child got the um, credit card and ordered 300 e-cigarettes to be delivered to the next door neighbor. Lieutenant found out because his credit card company, which I'm so glad they do, said, this is an unusual purchase. Did you authorize this? He said, no. And he said, I'll look into it. So he started to do an investigation. The full circle it kind of came from his house, and it was his son. And his son, as a sixth grader, already had the e-cigarettes sold at his elementary school. So, like social media, there's so much going on that our kids know that we don't know that they know. It's like, how would you know? And then, of course, there's mail fraud because he had it next door. He went and stole that from the neighbor. So, it was just a mess. But kids, um, I went online today to do that jewel slide. And it asked me, are you 21 to go to the next page? And age will be verified. So. I don't know if there's something that you have to do, like upload your ID or something, but you can borrow somebody's. You know, it's, it's easy to do. Any other questions? Well, I hope to come back. I'm going to talk with it, um, administrators and teachers later, but thank you for the same extra tonight and letting me know a little bit more about these Sorry, This is actually my coordinator and I've asked the, our vice principals to come tonight so if you have DOE or school questions regarding ESDs or something else they're here to answer you. Yes. 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 That, that is such a good point because I'm the education side but I'm not the enforcement side of the DOE and the school resource officers so I wanted to let parents ask those questions too, because um, I'm just showing you this side of the issue, but they're here to address that side. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any specific questions? School related? No? Okay, thank you. I was very informative, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.